Okay, let's have a look here. We got sound. We got sound. All right. Let's open up. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Where did we stop last time? Um, yeah, I remember the absolute. Okay. Let's just do a few today since I'm a little bit tired. It's a little bit late. Uh, right now, let's check the ends, but let's just split this page up in four. Okay. Um, when x is minus 3, we'll get minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 so that becomes 2 and that's minus and that becomes 4 so that's a 6 and then we put in 2 2 plus 1 is 3 and 1 is 4 okay and then the turning points are at 1 and minus 1 so at 1 um we're going to get 2 and at minus one, we'll also get two. So this is an absolute or a global max. This definitely not a max or a min. And these have kind of V shapes to them. So, so these would both be local and global min. Okay, so let's let's have a look. Max and then absolute min between minus one and one and two. That's interesting. That's interesting. Between minus one and one. Oh, is it flat? What about if I put in zero? Mm, very interesting. Very interesting graph. Very interesting. So, it's not a turning point. It's not like um, a vertex, I mean. So it's a global min. Uh, that's the hard one. I would have had to, I would need to make a graph to know that for sure. Okay, and this one's not anything. Mm -mm -mm. Very interesting question. Very interesting question. Okay, I like it. I like it, but how would we have known that? Yeah, okay. 126. Okay, so zero is zero, and then four, uh, that's a two when you root it, and then four cubed, four times four is 16, 64, eight, two minus eight minus six. Um, derivative, a half x power minus a half, minus 3 over 2 x power 1 over 2 and you want that to equal 0 cancel that multiply by x power and a half 
1 minus 3x equals 0. So x equals a third. And the y would equal, oops, I wonder if it's anything nice. One third minus root. Uh, one third power 3. 2 root 3 over 9. And um, I need the second derivative to know what's going on here. So bring down the power minus a quarter and then minus 3 over 2 minus 3 over 4 x minus a half and um, let's put in well it's going to be negative so it makes it uh, a max but is it a local or a global max? This is quite small. So I'm going to say this is a local max. And this one is a global min. No, it's not actually. This one's the global min. And I suppose then that would mean it's now a global max. Um, yeah, okay. 127. So if we put in 0, uh, we'll get 1. And if we put in 2 pi, we'll also get 1. And if we calculate the derivative, that's cos x minus sin x equals zero. So basically, uh, when is tan x equal to one? So that's at 45 degrees, you know, pi over four. So that's pi over four. And then um, one over root two, plus one over root two. So that's root two. And then the next time it's a solution, uh, yeah, it's pi plus pi over four. So that's five pi over four, okay. Okay, and then, yeah, but that would be um, minus root two then. Okay, so root, okay, so that's a global and a local. Oh yeah, and this one's local too global and local max and global and local min. Okay, let's have a look now because we have an answer for 127. Absolute max of pi over four and absolute min at five pi over four. Yep. Okay, and then the last one here, hmm zero and then minus three and then two pi and then same as before sine two pi is zero so also minus three and then the derivative is four cos theta plus three sine theta we need that to equal zero so that's tan theta minus 4 over 3, okay, <laughs> so we'll have tan inverse 
part of our tray and then pi plus tan inverse part of our tray um let's see what we get here seven over five Okay. Okay. Yep, minus seven over five. So it looks like we have this one is only a local max. This one is a local min, but this one is a global min this one is also a global min so that actually means this one here is also a global max then okay a little bit tricky today i wonder i wonder can we graph these to confirm them One twenty six. Let's try and do that first. If loads, Okay, here we go. All right. Square root x minus square root x cubed. Let's plot. So yeah, we can see a local and global max at about a third. Okay, and then global mins at the ends um zero and four. Oh yeah not zero so global min at the yeah and that's uh global also global max yeah okay and then 128 okay four sine x um minus three cos x right now zero and two pi so that's about about here to about here so looks like that point there is a global min and that point there is a global max and a local max and a local min and the ends are not really useful so yeah that's the same conclusion i reached here the first one is the glo global and local max and the second one i should have written in uh, oh it's only a local min but it's not global min zero minus three and then that looks further down though so i wonder if my seven over five is minus seven over five is that wrong seven over five for the max no that's seven over oh seven over five is must be wrong must be wrong okay Oh. oh, did I get the four over three upside down? Is that what the problem is? Hmm. 
No, I don't think so, because if I take this to the other side, that would be minus, and then, oh, minus. I lost the minus. So there's a minus there. That's going to change these. Okay. Okay, good thing I checked. Okay. Tan inverse minus 4 over 3. Okay. So that's a negative. Mm. So I'll have to add pi to that. Okay. Mm. So the negative is here and here. So that one's okay. Then I have to add two pi to the answer. So two pi, okay. So let's see what I get for the two pi answer. It's minus five. Okay, and so this one would be five. So that's a global as well. And then that's wrong. Okay, so that one's all right now. That answer we checked. That answer we checked at the back. And this one is all right then. Mm. Again, a little bit messy, aren't they? Okay, that's good for today. We'll wrap it up there. Thanks for watching.